using products of primes to find the highest common factor and the lowest common multiple. Now, the numbers have been given as product of primes already, um, so it's, it saves a little bit of time if we're going to use the, the correct method of this, but I know a lot of people will be um, unhappy with using the, the, the product of primes method and will go to the numbers and try to figure out the highest common factor, lowest common multiple with a calculator and just use the numbers. But it is actually much quicker and easier when you can see how it's done to work it out just by using the primes, products of primes. Now for the highest, co uh, highest common factor, what we need to do is find the biggest number that goes into both of these. Now um, what we need to do there is just take the lowest power of each of the prime numbers. So that's 2 to the power of 1, that's 3 to the power of 1, 5 to the power of 1 in both. Um, there is no, there's a 7 to the power of 1 here, but there is no 7 here, so 7 to the power of 0 is the power of 7 there. So for our highest common factor to go into both of these, um, if it's any higher than the power of 2 to the power of 1, it will not go into this number. If it was 2 squared, 2 squared won't go into this number because the highest power of this number is just 2 to the power of 1. So it's going to be built up of 2 to the power of 1, and the highest, the, the highest power that will go into both of these is 3 to the power of 1, and the highest one for this is clearly just 5 to the power of 1. And there is no 7 in this number, so we can't have 7 in the highest common factor. So we've got 2 times 3 times 5, which is 30. And that's generally the way you do it. You take the smallest power of the prime number that's in both. And if it's not in both, you can't use it. OK, work out the least common multiple of x and y. So uh, common multiples, if we think about if we take the big of the two numbers, 2 squared times 3 times 5 times 7, okay, we've got to find a number that that goes into and the other number goes into. Well, obviously the number goes into itself, so we can start with that number. Does this number go into it? Well, 2 to the power of 1 goes in 2 squared, that's fine. So the 2 is okay. Um, 3 to the power of 3 does not go into 3 because it's not a big enough power. The 5 to the power of 1 goes into the 5, that's OK. There is no 7, so the 7 is OK. All we've got to do is sort out this 3. Now this one has 3 to the power of 3, but this has only got 3 to the power of 1. So we need to up the power of the 3 to 3, so that this number will go into it. Once we've changed that, we now have a number that both this one goes into, because that's part of that number already, it's just with a smaller power of 3, and this number will go into, because 2 to the power of 1 goes into 2 squared, 3 to the power of 3 goes into 3 to the power of 3, 5 goes into 5, and there's no 7, so that's not important. So that is our final number, 2 squared times 3 cubed. So let's get the calculator out and work out what that is. 2 squared times 3 cubed times 5 times 7. And for least common multiple, it's sort of the opposite of the, the highest common factor. The highest common factor, we took the smallest power that was in both, the least common multiple, we've got to take the biggest power that's in both. So the biggest power of 2 that's in both is 2 squared. The biggest power of 3 is 3 cubed. The biggest power of 5 is just the 5. And the biggest power of 7 is just the 7. And that gives us the least common multiple of 3, 7, 8, 0.